guys, it's Miss Callahan. I hope you're having a good day. Um, this has made it all the way to lesson four of the Sweet Stories Club. Today I want to go over with you how to solve some of the story problems that we were working on before spring break. Um, I want to go over with you first the four steps to solving a math story problem. After that, I want to solve two different problems for you using the four steps from the problem solving checklist. And after that, you are going to go into Schoology and you're going to look for the math question that I left for you. And I want to see if you can solve the math question um, using all four steps of your problem solving checklist that I have to go over with you. All right. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is when you are solving a math story problem, there are four things that you need to do. The first thing that you need to be able to do is draw a picture to show what's happening. You're going to use that picture that you draw to create a number sentence. The same way that we have um, sentences match our writing when we're, doing, when we're writing stories, we want our number sentence to tell the story of what's happening in our math picture. After that, we're going to write a real answer. And what I mean by that is we're going to look at exactly what the question is asking and make sure that our answer is actually answering the question and that we are um, explaining our answer more using not only a number but a word. And then the final part of solving the problem according to your checklist is proving it. Proving it means that you are going to show that you got the answer correct by showing that answer in another way. All right, so let's get started with the first problem that I'm going to solve for you. All right. This problem says Jan cut her sister ate some of the cookies. Now Jan has seven cookies in her jar. How many cookies did her sister eat? All right, well, in order to solve this problem, we are going to go through all four steps. Step one, we're going to draw a picture. You can only draw a picture of the things that you know for certain. The first thing that we know for certain is that Jan put 10 cookies in a jar. I'm just going to use a circle to represent a cookie, and I'm going to draw 10 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those are the 10 cookies that Jan put in a jar. Now, the next thing I know is that her sister came along and ate some of those cookies. Some is not a number. So I want to move on to the next thing that I know. Now, Jan has seven cookies in her jar. So I know the sister took some away, but I also know that she still has seven in that jar. She started with all ten of these. Now I'm going to show how many she still has. She still has seven. So I'm going to color in seven cookies to show that those are the cookies that Jan still has. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven. Now, by showing what I do know, I can see what I don't know. I'm showing that she still has seven in her jar. Well, that means three must be taken away from her sister. Okay, so now I'm ready to move on to step two, which is where I'm going to write a number sentence that matches. All right, to write a number sentence, I have to look at how many cookies did I start with? I started with 10. Now, it said her sister ate some. When you're eating cookies, you're taking some away. So that means I'm going to use a subtraction symbol. And how many are taken away? Well, I have to use my sister to help me. Her sister did not take seven of them. She only took three of them. So I want my number sentence to show that 10 cookies Take away three cookies equal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cookies still there. All right, so I've made my picture. I've made my number sentence. Now the next step in solving my problem is for you to write a real answer. In order to do this, I have to go back to the question. How many did her sister eat? Well, it's either going to be seven or three. Which part of that picture is represented in the number of cookies her sister ate? Her sister did not eat the 
I didn't want to because I want to force the left hand jaw. So I know that these three cookies have to be the cookies that my sister ate. So the answer is three because I see that she did not leave these three cookies. She took them away from her sister and I have to write what it is that she took. She took three cookies. All right, the last thing that I need to do is I need to prove that I got this question right. And the way that I can prove that is by showing 10 take away three equals seven in another way that proves that I'm right. One way I can do that is with a number bond. When I'm working with a number bond, I know that I'm decomposing. I'm starting with a big number on top and I'm breaking it into two smaller numbers. When I look at my number sentence, the biggest number I see is the 10. So that tells me that I'm going to decompose 10 to prove my answer is three. So if I start with 10, one way that I can decompose it into two separate groups is to put three cookies over here and seven over here. When I put three and seven back up, it surely still does equal 10, and that means that I have proved that my answer all right, we're going to do one more together, and then you're going to show me what you can do. All right, this question says, Joe has six toys. Jake took some of the toys. Now Joe only has two toys. How many toys did Jake take? All right. So a lot going on in this problem. I'm going to use my four steps to help me solve it. First thing I'm going to do is draw a picture. What am I going to draw a picture of? Exactly what I read from the word problem. I'm going to use a simple symbol. This time instead of a circle, maybe I'll use squares. What I know is Joe has six toys. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are the six toys that Joe has. Okay, the next thing the problem tells me is Jake is going to take some of the toys away. I know he's going to take them, but I don't know how many. Some is not a number. All right, the next thing I know is that now, after Jake came and took some of them away, Joe still has two toys. So I'm going to color in two of the squares to show the two toys that Joe still has left. When I do that, my shows me what I wasn't able to know before, and that is how many Jake took away. If I started with six and I ended up with two, that tells me that Jake must have taken one, two, three, four toys away from Joe. So now that we have a picture, let's write a number sentence to match what our picture shows. Our picture shows that we started with six toys. And then Jake took four of those toys away and left Joe with two toys. All right, the real answer. Just because in the number sentence I write six minus four equals two, that doesn't mean that two is the answer. It just means that two is part of my number sentence. The answer has to answer the question. How many toys do Jake didn't take two toys. Those are the two toys that Jake left. He actually took four toys. So even though two is the answer to my number sentence, the number to my word problem, how many toys did Jake take, is actually the number four because I can see in my picture that he took four away. So for my real answer, I'm going to write four and four what? Four toys. Last thing I'm going to do I got it right. And this time, instead of using a number bond, I'm going to use a number line as my tool to prove it. All right, to prove on a number line, I'm going to start where my number sentence starts. That means I'm going to start on the number six, and I'm going to take away four. When I take away, that means I'm jumping backwards. So I'm going to jump backwards four times. One, two, three, four. And I landed right here at the number two. Exactly what I got in my number sentence, which means I have proved it. I proved that I solved it correctly. 
All right, so remember, when you're using your problem solving checklist, you are going to go through and draw a picture to match what happened. You're going to write a number sentence that shows what your picture is showing. You're going to pay super close attention to what the question is asking and make sure you're giving the right number as your answer. And then you're going to prove it by using a number line or a number bond to prove that when you were doing your math and your number sentence that you were able to get the answer. All right. Good job. Thanks for listening and I can't wait to see these different um, pictures and number sentences that you upload into